So Martijn, we are at your, your office in, in The Hague, Netherlands. Uh, you're uh, the, the founder of, of Cam2. Yep. So what is Cam2? Cam2 is a sharing platform for, for campers and RVs. So basically uh, a little bit of an, an Airbnb, but then not with, with bricks, but with kind of carton wood. And it's also moving. So uh, um, yeah, everything that you see on the camping ground, that's, uh, that's Cam2. Yeah, cool. It's a quite a, a really obvious concept because when you look about okay, what can people share uh, and also what is of great value from them, I think it is a really a really uh, valuable asset. So, how did you get to the idea for your uh, platform? Yeah, we started as a more of a global sharing platform, like uh, it was called Deal It, like Share It basically. Um, but that was too broad. And then we started to, to focus. We had to focus on, on products, on locations, and on, on, on people that, that were, were going to use the products. Uh, so f first thing we did was textbook sharing for students. And yeah, thousands of students were, uh, are sharing s textbooks each year. Uh, but then um, we found out that, that like, what is more valuable, what's, what is bigger, what is uh, of a grosser, gr greater value to people to, to be able to share. And as I like to camp myself, I thought like, yeah, those products, if you think about it, like there's 540,000 uh, RVs and, and caravans in the Netherlands just standing still for 48 weeks per year. So basically they're only used for four weeks. Like if we can improve that only a slight little bit, then there would be so much value created for people who own the products and also who, uh, who can use them. Mm, that sounds quite quite uh, obvious. So were you also the first one with uh, this kind of platforms in the Netherlands? Yeah, we started in May last year basically to, to think about it and to look into the market. And actually there, w there was no peer-to-peer -peer sharing plat platform in, in these products uh, by then, no. Nope. Okay, and, and, and how did you start from your idea to make it a, a real platform? So which steps did you take? Um, I knew we, we had the development power in-house to, to build a platform. We've created two platforms uh, beforehand, so in that sense it was okay. Um, but the real challenge here is that people who own a caravan or a camper or RV, um, those people are really proud of their, their asset. And yeah, it's basically one of the, the biggest purchases you do in a year, in your lifetime actually. So we first started talking to them. We went to campsites, we went to uh, rental agents, just to see like if people would do it, like what are the, the challenges, what are the, the risks they see, and uh, if they would do it, and how could they do it. Uh, just first talking to people. That's like we want to build a platform for people, and basically we should start with listening to the people, what, uh, what the needs are. Yeah, I think a lesson many companies can can uh, can learn from. Yeah, and 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 and, and what and what were your mm. biggest challenges? Because I think uh, uh, first you say okay, it's it's a product that's really valuable for the people. I think it's also a target group that's really don't really need the money uh, because when you can buy a RV of eighty thousand euro, uh, yeah, that says that you get uh, some money left or not anymore. Um, uh, but what were your main challenges, uh, uh, like insurance, I think, uh, 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 is a really important, uh, important one. And at what way did you arrange to, to get an insurance uh, partner on board who also believes in your, in your concept? Yeah, um, it's, it's basically two questions. Huh? Like, um, people don't really need the money, why should they do it? Mm -hmm. And the second one is, what are the challenges with the insurance? Like, um, Let's start with, with the first one, with the people who don't really need the money. Like, if you look at, at an RV, um, th the cost that you have each year without the uh, depreciation cost are already 2,000, 2,500 euro per year. And it's only um, like taxes, uh, um, uh, insurance, uh, you have a place where it should be standing all the time. Um, there is some maintenance to be done. So pretty fast, you, you're 2,000, 2,500 euro f further. And also for people who were able to buy such a, an expensive product, it's still quite some money. So people um, kind of, people either sell the product 
or they think like hey, if we can get this that money back then we can uh, use the product longer and own it longer so also for those people it can be interesting but then it has to be done in, in, the, in the right way um, in if you look at the second question is insurance is a, is a, was a big one uh, in the end we we ended up with uh, Boveme as an insurance provider for, for caravans. Um, Boveme wanted to go into the sharing economy. Um, we actually, it took us six months to get it all organized. It was quite a bit of a time uh, because it's also, it's a unique insurance. It's a new product. Um, and in the end, uh, in, in January, it was, was okay. And uh, we got, got it signed. And, and, and uh, what were the biggest challenges in this process? Because you're working together uh, with quite some, uh, some, some, some big uh, organizations, like both VMA, but also with the, uh, the, the, the Caravan Club. Yeah, with the ANWB, like the, the auto... Uh, yeah, the road service. Uh, the road service, road assistance service. And also with the NKC, which is Europe's biggest camper club. Um, the biggest challenge with the insurance basically was that they had to develop an, a new product because they only insure for the days that other people are using your caravan um, and nobody really knew like how big the market could be so we had to to prove ourselves that we could build the platform we had to prove that people wanted to use the platform that they are willing to share the caravans uh, people had to see some traction before also the insurance company really started to believe in it. And then they had to do quite a bit of work on the back end to, uh, to get it all organized. And one of the things there is that basically if, you, if there is an accident in whatever, in France or something, people will full first start calling the, the owner of the, the caravan because that's on the, in, on the, on the license, uh, but the insurance is via us. So, it's not that insurance that you have to have. It's the insurance from uh, Camp 2 via Boveme that you, that you need to uh, come into contact with. And therefore, in the back end, there is a lot of things happening to, to make sure that the right insurance provider um, gets contacted and uh, it's all done in the, in the right way without having to uh, bother the, the owner of the caravan. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's a really good complex uh, uh, behind the scenes uh, exactly. organization. <coughs> yeah. And also uh, the other two parties you say were uh, working together. And what a way, uh, uh, how, how is it for a startup to work with, with big organization? Because I know quite startups who are working together with bigger organizations and, and they say, okay, we're missing the speed. And also some startups that's changed uh, partners uh, because of a lack of speed. So, so uh, how, what is your experience with that? <laughs> it's Political correct. Say. <laughs> <laughs> Frustrated. <laughs> That's no. Um, the pace at, we, at which we have to act is a total different pace than where the bigger organizations are um, used to, to, to work on. Um, so it does um, require quite a bit of um, trusting in each, into each, in each other and uh, also adapting to each other to be able to, to get things organized. Yeah. Um, what, what I just said, like for the insurance, it did take us six months to get it all organized. We did have the time because we started in, in July uh, contacting each other and it, it was then done in, in January um, the season only starts in, in, in April May so in that sense we were quite okay um, so we had the time uh, in, in terms of the, the NKC which we will, we will work with um, yeah, we have a, quite an extensive meeting tomorrow um, to get all the all the members of the NKC which is 34,000 members get them all um, yeah, get to know watch us and get to know about the uh, us working together with them. Um, it will be a, a tough meeting. It will also be like a, an interesting one. Also for them, they kind of like to speak what, what we are working with. Um, they do have to adapt, and sometimes 
yeah, we also have to take into account that things can take a bit more time, but then as soon as it starts to accelerate, it can accelerate pretty, pretty fast. Yeah, so would you say, okay, in the beginning it's maybe frustrating because it takes a lot of time, but it needs to, uh, like a diesel, it's, it needs some time before to get to speed, but when it's, it's, it's on speed, it can really go really, uh, really fast. Yep, yeah. exactly. And um, I think really, really interesting because uh, when you get a platform, you need s several things. You need demand, supply, platform uh, and, and insurance. So for insurance, you got the Bove May, uh, but also for the, for the uh, s supply side, you've got uh, uh, the, the, the NKC with uh, f uh, 34. Uh, thousand uh, members owning a uh, an RV, an yeah. RV, and and the demand supply side is also, I think, where you are going to to make profit of the uh, membership uh, or member cooperation with the with the uh, A and W uh, uh, road assistance service. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and also yeah, in that sense, it's also just the the regular ways like um, like the social media that we're using quite well, I think. Um, we do get thousands of visitors each week at at, the, at our website, um, and most of it is like via word of mouth. I think in the end, the best thing and the only thing you can do as a as a startup is just to overachieve uh, expectation if it comes to to people and people expect something of a platform. If we can make that happen and even over overachieve over there, then people will start telling other people about it mm -hmm. and. Uh, yeah, that's where we benefit from. And, and, and platforms are really famous about their, their really uh, ability to scale really fast. Uh, but then you also have to uh, make many processes uh, uh, automatically. Uh, you, before, this, uh, before this interview, you, sh you also shared that there are quite some personal questions uh, with every uh, peop uh, person who is renting out uh, their RV or caravan because it's really a personal thing, but also a really diverse thing. Uh, there's not one size fits all construction. So, at what way are you going to manage to 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 scale up, but uh, don't have a team of uh, 50 people on telephones behind us in your office uh, to fix all the questions uh, between the demand and supply uh, side? Yeah, exactly. The what we see uh, that that is a thing, uh, that is a challenge, and what we see today is to 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 open up earlier on in the process. Uh, and to make direct contact via the, the, the renter and the sharer uh, uh, possible. To make sure that people can ask like all these small detailed questions directly to the, to the person who can answer the questions best, which is basically the owner of the, of the RV. So uh, th that's, that's one of the ways to, to make sure that, that we can it's not so much automating, but it's more that we make it efficient. Yeah, we facilitate the the contact between the, the people, and I think the platform is in the end uh, a place that facilitates the availability of sharing of products, but also of information. So. And how do you, how do you manage for yourself? Because I, I can imagine that be, uh, you want to uh, to have the, con the, the, the the process really really efficient, fast, and good. Uh, so when you see a conversation, they think, okay, maybe I can help. How do, how do you prevent yourself in 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 in, in, in not helping them themselves and, and and giving them the right environments uh, to to uh, to really contact each other? I can imagine uh, because sometimes you think, oh, well, why don't you say this? And then you want to help, but in the end, uh, when, when you want, when you want to scale up, that isn't possible. So uh, how do you manage for yourself the balance in in letting things go and letting also the communication go between demand and supply? Um. <laughs> that is going in a sense it will go automatically as there is so much work in our, on our plates that we do not really have the time to properly monitor or facilitate those uh, discussions so if we do have the time I do like to contact the people but there's so much m more to be done every day that I just don't find the time to get that done so and then we have to let go and uh, maybe that's also a good thing. So the best thing to, uh, to let things go is just to, to overfill your schedule. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, it's also a strategy. <laughs> and you're talking now for about, ten, I think 10 minutes we're now on the way, uh, about we. Uh, so there, there was already a we before uh, uh, Camp2 and also before uh, the other um, 
uh, uh, share it? Yeah, the textbook sharing, yeah. 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 Uh, so, so who is we and, 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 and how did you come together? Yeah, how we came together. Um, we have two developers, uh, Roel and Joop, which I basically know from my, uh, uh, via my roommate in my student house, like uh, years before. And um, with these guys, we, we started each and every platform. We worked together for over two years now. And uh, I just trust these guys. They're really, really smart individuals and uh, really helpful. And uh, Mart is also with us for uh, one year and two months already. Yeah, quite a while. So uh, well, I'm, I'm really happy that, that there is a we and it's definitely needed because uh, uh, you do, do need a team to, to get things organized. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I really recognize that. So, but I don't, I don't have a team, so I'm just uh, a <laughs> lonely uh, <laughs> expedition leader. And um, he said, okay, well, well, we knew each other from, from being roommates in a student house. Uh, I guess you're not living in a student house anymore. So you need also, uh, yeah, so you have also so, some, some, uh, some bills to pay. So how did you manage to, to, to raise this uh, financially? Uh, keep costs low. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the most important, yeah. That's the most important one. Also like the, the, the room where we are in, uh, which is like a fantastic building from the government, which was a former ministry of, I don't know, what affairs. Uh, we have to pay 250 euro per month to, to, to stay here, which is, um, yeah, is keeping costs low is, is super important. Um, and uh, my wife is working and she's actually providing for the, the household costs. Yeah. To put it like that. Yeah, I recognize that's from somebody else. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, at what way did you get your investments to? to because you, uh, uh, it's 250 euro, but in the end you got also quite some out of pocket costs, I, I think. So uh, yeah. um, that you did some, uh, do, you, do you got investors or did you put your own money in? I did put my own money in. Uh, we also have investors on board, a few. Uh, a few people who, who just trust me and trust us actually to, to, to get this all done. Uh, and we're also now into a, a new uh, financing round via, via, via Leap Funder. So if people are interested, then uh, just contact me and also look at leapfunder.com. You will see Camp2 over there and you can have a look. Um, people who are investing already are pretty nice names actually. The directors from uh, um, one of the biggest travel uh, websites in the Netherlands. Um, people from the ANWB, who, who also personally invest in us, mm. which is actually, uh, yeah, I think that that's the best trust that they can give to you, which is, uh, I'm really grateful for that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a really strong, uh, strong signal that they really also personal trust in your, 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 your platform. And, um, and what are your next steps? Because now you're, you're busy uh, building in Netherlands, uh, so. Uh, yeah, the next steps are to um, further optimize the process this summer. Um, so it's a, it's a really high season at the moment. Uh, it's, it's quite busy, but now we have to make sure that everything is fully automated, working well. Um, first people have come back from their vacations. Um, they do have some extra tips to get some, some more stuff automated or changed or whatever. And then as of September, uh, we will uh, go and look into the international expansion. That will actually also be with uh, with the with the A and W B. There is an, an over. There's like a, uh, what's the English name? Like there's an kind of agency or something. I don't know how to say it. Um, of, with the A and W B, the ADEC, which is the German A and W B, the Scandinavian A and W Bs, and and the Portuguese one. Um, and I will present our case to them in, in September, beginning of October, and from, from there onwards, uh, that will be the basis to also build credibility in other countries to make sure that people also um, start sharing their RVs and caravans on the platform over there and then uh, roll out international. Cool, and, and uh, because in Netherlands you've got quite some really big 
uh, good partners. So it's a really, really smart move for that. And really also congratulations by achieving that, of course, because they won't uh, work with, uh, with everybody. Yeah. Um, and what we are going to, 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 to get at, okay, uh, partly uh, uh, thanks to, to the uh, AMB, uh, but are you, are you also uh, uh, putting people in the country themselves, or are you going to stay on controlling everything from the office over here in, in The Hague? I think you do need a, a community manager in the in the countries itself for sure. Um, for now, we're also working with some some freelancers. I, I kind of like the approach because people are re result oriented, um, and we will also start working with some freelancers in in those countries to to set it up and to build the first communication to to press and everything, and then um, from there onwards we can see like which people we we do have a, a connection with which people um yeah can can be part of the team and then uh, we will start with the i think we will start with the with, with the community managers one in each country and then see where we will end up yeah cool and and uh, uh, last thing back again to the insurance you said you have the, the uh, uh, for the rv you got it uh, with, uh, with uh, with bovee may but for the caravans, you got some other construction. Uh yeah, yeah. With the caravans, it's with Bovemai, okay. and with uh, with the RVs, it's with Spitz Verzekering, Spitz Insurances, which is a um, which is another insurance provider. Yeah. And and that's something like a collective. You said what, 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 what's the construction about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, like with with RVs, the construction is that um, people can um, get insured for the whole year for themselves, but also for the uh, renting out of their, their RV. Um, and it will be like in a, in a collective, uh, I don't know, what is it? Like, it's, it is a collective, mm -hmm. um, which means that like the, the damage we will have with all of our RVs together, uh, that will determine whether um, there will be a uh, extra cost for the insurance or whether there will be a discount we can get 30% back if there is uh, the costs are very limited and we might have to pay 20% more if there is a um, uh, it's we are unfortunate say put it like that um, results are pretty pretty good f for spitz insurances so um, I believe it will be all good um, we have to see it at the end of the year, of course, uh, yeah. but the cost will never ever be more than that. And people don't have any no claim because now there is this no claim build up at normal insurances or at other insurances, which people can lose. Uh, we don't have that. So the, the risk is, is kept at the, at the, the, at the minimum. The, uh, it's really, yeah. yeah, I think it's really interesting, also really collaborative uh, construction. Yeah, um, exactly. And, um, and you're also working uh, together with, uh, with uh, or, or going to work together with with uh, dealers uh, or organizations or, or uh, where the campers, uh, uh, campers are parked or the caravans are parked. Um, and one way, because I think also when you, when you look at insurance, uh, also uh, with car sharing, so when I'm uh, renting out your car, uh, then I really feel personal connected to you. So I won't mess up your car because I think, okay, but at the end of the day, I, I will bring it back to Martijn and then I want to give him back a good car. When I'm renting out a car with a car, uh, with a car renting company, I don't have that feeling at all, um, I got, uh, and what do you think that it will? Ah, there's some school, school, school children outside. Uh, and what way do you think that will affect on the insurance uh, when you uh, when people are not uh, uh, meeting each other uh, face to face, but when the uh, transaction will go through a, a dealer? Yeah, yeah, I do. This personal connection is really important. I fully agree over there. Um, um, if it goes via a, a dealer, uh, there's less of a personal connection between the, the, the owner of the vehicle and the, and the sharer. Um, what we do see and what we also um, try to not only facilitate, but also kind of push people towards meeting each other beforehand. And uh, that's actually what you also see, like people are excited about what caravan are am I taking to, to my vacation this summer and uh, can we have a look beforehand and can we meet the people? So what we actually do see is that people um, 
plan to meet each other beforehand and drink a cup of coffee together, the, the sharer likes it because of the, or the owner likes it because then they actually have a bit of, of a better feeling like who will be using our, our caravan uh, at the vacation. And uh, for the renter, it's also nice to like prepare for your holiday is actually quite a nice thing to do, yeah. to, to spend your time. So uh, that's actually what we promote big time yeah. to, 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 to create the bonding in that way. Yeah, and I think it's also uh, really possible because people are uh, li uh, like with car sharing, uh, uh, then you will uh, rent out the car for one or two days. And, 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 and with caravans uh, and, and RVs, it's, it's, it's for two or three weeks probably. So it's, it's also f uh, for a longer period. So it's also the, the, yeah, the thresholds to, to, to meet is much, much lower because you really want to meet these, uh, these people. Yeah. And, um, and what way are you going to, to manage to, to, uh, to keep adding value uh, to your customers in the future because now one of the things you're adding uh, is value is the assurance but i don't know in a couple of years one two three five years the the the, the normal camper insurance uh, 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 will also uh, 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 facilitate a a, a a sharing option uh, and when you have rented a, a caravan for some for somebody the next time you can call this person uh, yourself yeah so and what way uh, uh, will you keep on adding value for your customers in the future? Yeah, uh, great question, of course. Um, the <coughs> we, we do have to add value to be able to, to uh, be worth getting an income, for sure. And um, in the end, like what we have to do as a, as a sharing facilitator, we have to make sure that the, the costs in both, both time and money uh, in the exchange of the product, the actual exchange, is as low as possible. And um, there is quite a bit of risk involved in sharing an expensive unit such as an, a caravan or, or, or uh, an RV. Um, so we have to make sure that the contracts are being dealt with the, as soon as there is something does happen, that we uh, make sure that it is uh, being taken care of like immediately in the right way um, and that the exchange of the product is as, as smooth as possible. So in the end, if we can uh, make sure that people can just give it to each other and don't have the feeling like, whoa, what have I done and will it all be okay? But if we make sure that we, uh, as soon as something happens, because things will happen, as, as easy as that, um, we'll, then we can make sure that we're worth uh, the the money that people give to us for the, for this exchange yeah. being uh, yeah that is that is all been taken care of yeah 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 so the biggest challenge is to keep on uh, proving your added value to your to your to your users yeah yeah via cr contracts via insurance via repair and maintenance um, those things yeah okay cool okay thank you for the interview and uh, good luck with uh, building your business thank you <laughs> <laughs> bye